Hello and welcome everyone, it is me the level Arsenal awesome, Portal Tutors back for you with another deck profile and uh, something that I cooked up along the way when I was kind of digging for something to maybe look um, to pick up in the TCG was this a uh, deep sea diva sharks or you know just like a fairly simple deep sea diva deck a very iconic normal summon from you know the good old synchro days of this game uh, that's still very powerful today even with you know especially with the new support that it has gotten so yeah let's run this down maybe talk about a couple of combo lines you can be taking in this deck and then close this one off just as always uh, starting off the main deck are of course three copies of deep sea diva when Deep Sea Diva is normal summon, you can special summon a level 3 or lower Sea Serpent from your deck. Incredibly powerful effect um, that still feels like very powerful and relevant nowadays. Um, there have been, you know, sprite lists that opt for this uh, to make it gigantic. Um, but of course in this we are looking to make some rather powerful Synchro Bosses, uh, which is the main part behind this. Uh, getting into the sharks here real quick, uh, since they are lining themselves up very nicely here. Uh, Abyss Shark here is a free special summon if we control only water monsters and will add us a level 3, 4 or 5 fish from deck to hand. And if we use Abyss Shark for the XZ summon of a number monster, uh, mainly number 4 stealth Kragen down here, another really cool card that this deck can make use of. Um, you can also treat this as a level 3 or 4 monster, but the levels also kind of need for some crossings and, you know, some corner cases you can make, like a Prima Donna with a Deep Sea Diva that got negated and an Abyss Shark. Um, Abyss Shark, however, I believe, does not lock you into Xyz, but locks you into water, so keep that in mind. What does lock you into Xyz is the Buzzsaw Shark. Uh, we're playing two copies of this, uh, just as an additional normal summon if you really don't find a way to Diva, uh, which is is rare. Uh, you can target a water monster control special a fish from deck with the same level um, and you can deactivate its effects that turn and it locks you into Xyz. Um, also if you use this for the Xyz of a water monster you could treat this as a level 3 or a level 5 but that probably won't come up in this deck. Um, there's also some like very high roll combo lines where you can just summon this off of a prima donna if you really have like a lot of gas to work with. Um, and then just make like a free stealth Kraken or Toad or Abyss Dweller on top of your already, you know, like on top of like making a Chang'e or a Dragite. Then next up we have two copies of Silent Angler. Just a free water extender but locks you out of special summoning monsters from the hand for the rest of the turn. So keep in mind that this might be the last guy to summon out of your hand if you draw it. Uh, Silent Sea Nettle in a similar vein is another, you know, just free bo body if you control a water monster, uh, but does lock you into waters the turn you activate it. Um, and has a very neat uh, graveyard recursion effect. Uh, you can banish this from the graveyard and then shuffle three water monsters from your graveyard back into the deck, which is kind of nice, especially to, you know, recycle the South Kragen and the attached spawns. Um, and funnily enough, you can also put back the uh, banished Sea Nettles with a uh, Prima Donna. So you kind of are very well able to, you know, uh, keep your resources in deck, which is rather lovely. Uh, two copies of Tenny Spirit Shathana, just another free body. Uh, we're not playing this for the Tenny portion. Uh, I think if you find the space um, or want to make the space, you can probably cut down on one of like the instant fusion targets and play like a Monk of the Tenny um, to more easily get this into the graveyard if you draw it uh, and, you know, go for Aria to search Diva. Uh, but that's, I think, uh, personal preference. Um, then we have two Gita Gunard Dru Dunagus here. This name always cracks me up. Um, if there's a special, you can banish cards from your opponent's deck equal to the number of water monsters you control. And you can target a level for a lower water you control, increase its level by its original level, which is rather nice. This also has an attack boosting effect um, if you banish it from the graveyard, but that is the least relevant portion. The most relevant portion of this is the level modulation since this is your deep sea diva target and that way you either have an easy way into uh, Duonegus targeting itself making it six so you have a Dragite life or uh, Duonegus targeting diva making it four to make a deep sea prima donna which is an incredible card that you want to try and make a whole lot of use of. Uh, we have three deep sea minstrel here this is mainly here for the in hand effect you can discard the deep sea minstrel and a water monster to look at your opponent's hand and banish a card from their hand face up until the end phase um this is not only important to set up the deep sea prima donna effect since you don't want to give your opponent free cards and um, but this is also really nice in just getting rid of like problematic hand traps this deck does not have really good answers to you know certain blowout hand traps like nibiru um, and, you know, you really want your Deep Sea Diva to resolve, so even getting rid of something uh, lower impact, like a Veiler, like an Ash, like an Imperm, 
is rather huge for some additional deep sea targets. We are playing a sentry and an artisan. These both are uh, very important once you want to extend into uh, one of your final end board pieces. Um, since you will need the sentry to make an architect and the artisan to get into Chengying. Uh, sentry on uh, special summon, sending two cards from your deck to the graveyard and adding a level for all or water from your graveyard to your hand. And artisan on special summon and being able to mill the top card of your deck and then targeting a level for all or water in your graveyard, except the artisan and special it, but its effects are negated. Uh, we're playing a rather sizable instant fusion package. We're playing an instant fusion and two ready fusion here with uh, two attached targets, one in a Deep Sea Shark, which is, you know, a very fitting name, as this is probably what I call this deck, um, and a Rare Fish for some rank for extension. Um, this might look excessive, but trust me, having the second target is so nice in so many situations. Um, you can't always guarantee finding, like, a cross out, a caught by, or, like, a Minstrel to snipe, like, that, you know, important hand trap to uh, get Diva to resolve. Um, so having, you know, a deep sea shark to summon then, um, to make, like, still make a prima donna is rather handy, um, despite, you know, already having good rank 4 extension, which you will need for, you know, the shark toolbox, I guess. Uh, we're playing three copies of Deep Sea Aria. This is your archetypal rotor. Uh, the Spanish is a water from grave and adds a level 4 lower sea serpent from deck to hand. Um, very good way to just, like, find D.Va if you, you know, haven't found D.Va, or, you know, you could also just grab a minstrel if you already found D.Va which is very nice, and capping off like the archetypal lineup uh, are two copies of Magellanica, the Deep Sea City. Uh, when this is activated, you place a water from uh, your deck on top of your deck, and once per turn, you can target a water you control and increase its level by one or two, which does make uh, the level shenanigans in this deck a bit easier. Um, and also once per turn during your main phase, if you special a water, you can look at your opponent's hand, and if you do banish a card from it face up until the end phase, which is another good way to set up Prima Donna, since once you make Prima Donna, this would trigger, if you already have it face up, to, uh, you know, banish a card from your opponent's hand, even if it's at random. Uh, it still gives you a card to put back into the hand with Prima Donna. Um, I think I'll, you know, just quickly talk about the Prima Donna here, an incredible card that I really like to, you know, play in a deck someday, um, because it's just neat. Uh, Text a tuner and non-tuner is a level 7 water synchro tuner. And the synchro monster you summon with this card can't be targeted by monster effects, which is a very neat bit of protection, uh, especially on something like an Adamancipator Risen Dragite that has a built-in spell trap negate, um, or, you know, a Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chengying that already has built-in protection. This can make these cards rather tough to deal with, which is very, very nice. Uh, the first effect of this card reads that you can target an opponent's banished card and add it to... Uh, yeah, and then you add to your hand or you special summon a level 4 or water monster from the deck. The wording just really messed me up there. And if you do, you add that initial targeted banished card to your opponent's hand, which is why you want to, you know, make sure you have, like, a good couple of ways to, you know, actively banish cards uh, from your opponent's hand as you can, you know, give your opponent those back and, you know, don't need to hand them, like, a free card that you banished off Dunagus. Um, can maybe, like, look to, you know, shave a cross out, shave, shave, like, a cross out for the third Magellanica, but I really like having, you know, more defensive options in this deck. Um, then for the rest of the extra deck, we're playing a Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Cheng Ying, a big Chungus himself, uh, gains 100 for each banished, and your opponent's monsters lose 100 attack and defense for each banished cards. And if this guy would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish a card from your graveyard instead, and if a card's banished, you can banish a card from your opponent's field and graveyard. Um, incredible boss monster just like chilling on this guy with you know the protection from Deep Sea Prima Donna can sometimes you know just win you a game because you're playing Towers Turbo at home uh, which is rather nice um, and you know this guy is really troublesome to deal with once you know you got that Prima Donna protection on him. Uh, Navy Dragon Mech here as like a maybe cute going second option if this is special you can target cards your opponent controls up to the number of tuners and grave and negate their effects until the end of the turn. And if the Synchro Summon card is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can target a tuner in your graveyard, a tuner, not a tuner, although with, you know, the fish theme, these could also be tuners, um, and add it to your hand, which is rather lovely. Um, for a level 9 option for the first turn, we have a Ravenous Crocodragon Architus here, uh, gains 500 for each card in your hand, 
and on Synchro Summon this draws cards equal to the number of non-tuners used for the Synchro Summon and this can quick effect this card to, to target one on the field and pop it. Very nice piece of disruption um, and with Deep Sea Sentry you do have quite a couple cool lines uh, that give you a bit of follow-up. Adamancer Predators and Dragon I think needs no introduction and um, this is simply a spell trap negate. I uh, talked about the Prima Donna and then we have Deep Sea Repetitor here. This takes Deep Sea Diva, Deep Sea Diva and a non-tuner. Uh, has a boosting effect, which is kind of cute, but the main part what makes this neat is that if this Synchro Summon card is sent to your graveyard, you can target a level 5 or higher water monster in your graveyard except a Repetitor and special it in defense, but locks you into waters after you do that. Uh, very nice for some follow-up setups if you like were able to uh, Sentry recur a D.Va, since that way you can make div uh, you can you know use D.Va to summon the second Duan, I guess. Uh, make Repetitor. And if you have like an extender from there, you can use the repetitor and that to make like another synchro and then use the repetitor to maybe like recur prima donna to resolve that again. Um, this get deck does have like a fair bit of good follow up options, uh, which is rather nice and like one of the main reasons why I was looking into something similar. Uh, for you know the shark portion here, we're playing a good couple of Xyz, um, a copy of Bahamut Shark to go into Toad. There's like a couple of cool lines where you can make like Bahamut Toad. Uh, insula insulate yourself from like hand traps and then use deep sea aria to banish the water you just banished off the bahamut uh, you just detached off the uh, bahamut effect um and just like make a diva line under toad protection which is really nice uh stealth kragen is just a very nice quick effect pop um with you know some occasional burn attached to it a uh, similar story with the stealth kragen spawns and funnily enough all of these float on being destroyed into each other you know stealth kragen floating into the spawns from your extra deck and the spawns floating into stealth kragen from the graveyard and since stealth kragen is only soft once per turn um you are able to pop quite a couple cards with this and capping off the extra deck lineup here is an area the water charmer gentle uh, this could probably also be you know your slot for monk of the tenny but i haven't had that come up quite as much as you want to believe um, so I went with area because it's, you know, nice to make. In some cases, you'll be able to, you know, yoink a water monster out of your opponent's graveyard. Um, and this is just, you know, something cute to make in those cases. But with that out of the way, I think we'll talk a bit about some combo lines and take a look what this deck can do. And here we are with the woman of the hour. With Deep Sea Diva, we're going to go ahead and normal summon Deep Sea Diva, use her effect to special summon a copy of the Grunards from the deck. Are we going to use the Grunards here to start banishing some cards from our opponent's deck, which I will need for this demonstration. Um, we're going to go Grunards, target the Diva, make her a level 4. This way we can go into Deep Sea Prima Donna. Uh, usually, this is where, you know, you usually want to find like a Deep Sea Minstrel earlier or um, the Magellanica Field Spell uh, to, you know, be able to have a card from your opponent's hand banished by now. Um, but in a worst case, uh, you will, you know, have to kind of give your opponent an additional card here um, unless you just want to make like a Dre Guide, I guess. Um, but I really like this option of uh, to, you know, just make the Prima Donna here. Um, here you have, you know, two options. You can either summon Deep Sea Sentry. Uh, Sentry will just, you know, be put on the board, um, add you the Diva back from the graveyard, and then you will make an Architus, or you can make Artisan and have the option to either still make a Dragite or a Chengying uh, with, you know, the added protection of the Prima Donna. I will go ahead and summon the Artisan here, since I do want to make a Chungus Bungus. Uh, Artisan here will go ahead and summon back the uh, Duonegus, and from here we will, you know, turn those two into a Chengying. Um, Prima Donna wants to put back a banished card here, but since we don't have anything banished, uh, we don't really need to recur anything here. I'll probably real quick get back to the point uh, where I was selecting my target for the Prima Donna, and then I'll reconnect with you guys. Looking very familiar, are we? Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, you do have the option here to, uh, instead of summoning the Artisan, um, just grab the Sentry. Uh, go for the Sentry effect here, mill a couple cards, uh, grab back a Diva for the follow-up if you want to do that, and then just opt into making a Ravenous Crocodragon Architus. Uh, since, you know, this is all usually off of one card, uh, so you would, um, usually if you were going for this line, uh, have like a roughly you know four additional cards in your hand here uh, so you have like more than enough pitches for the Architus and um, possibly also an Abyss Shark in there which you know just translate into a Stealth Kragen, uh, translate into a Stealth, Kra stealth Kragen on board uh, English hard um, 
So yeah, uh, very cool combo setups that you're also just easily able to do off of, you know, normal summoning Deep Sea Diva, like it's 2008, um, which is kind of cool. And uh, something that I really liked about the stack. The nostalgia behind this card, definitely huge. Um, and the new support is crazy. But I think we'll take a quick look at, you know, uh, a more high rolly option, if you want to say that, um, and what you can do with that. And with that, we'll be looking at, you know, a silly little three card setup you can do with the stack. Uh, you will need, you know, a free water body uh, that preferably doesn't take up your normal summon since you will need that for the deep sea diva abyss shark this is the only piece of this like that you only have like one copy of uh, since uh, you know or like uh, three copies of um, since you know you this could be the two shathanas you're rocking or you know any of your instant fusions um, deep sea diva also searchable over the uh, aria uh, we're going to go ahead put this shathana on the board here activate abyss shark to go ahead put that on the board and with that, add a copy of Silent Angler. Uh, going to go ahead, special summon the Silent Angler. And since we are not going for a Stealth Kragen here, um, but a Bahamut Shark, uh, we will go ahead, overlay those two for Bahamut and are able to establish a Toad on summon number five exactly, which is very nice. Uh, which means we can, you know, of course, very safely go ahead and put this Deep Sea Diva on the board. Uh, go ahead and summon the Grunards here. Could almost think this is a mill deck with how much cards you would be banishing here, uh, since that is five cards off the top of your deck, uh, opponent's deck gone. Um, we'll go ahead and make the uh, Prima Donna here just simply with the Abyss Shark, since there's not a whole lot of things you can do with the Abyss Shark post this. Um, go for the Prima Donna, and here you once again have a couple options. You know, I could just take uh, the uh, Prima Donna here if I don't want to give my opponent like another card. Um, and uh, the pre and the Duonagus, uh, make Cheng Ying, which is, I think, a perfectly fine play to make. Um, but I could also be very funny and uh, use this Prima Donna here to, um, especially, you know, if you had, like, as, like, a fourth or fifth card in your hand, uh, a way to, you know, natively banish one card from your opponent's hand. I can summon Bassaw Shark here. I do, w I will need to make Cheng Ying here before uh, using the Bassaw Shark. Um, since otherwise I am in a problematic situation. Um, and now since I've, you know, basically nothing left, uh, can go ahead, bust Saw Shark, summon out the Silent Angler from the deck and add like a Stealth Kragen or an Abyss Dweller onto this. So you do have quite a couple of setup options, uh, which are fairly sticky, you know, between the protection of Cheng Ying and the floating of Stealth Kragen and, you know, just a hard Omni Negate in Totally Awesome. Um, there's just a really good amount of setups you can go for and kind of tailor towards what matchup you are playing and probably, you know, your opponent will have to chew on a lot of these. Um, so yeah, I'll be seeing you guys with the decklist again for some closing thoughts. Overall, what is there to say? Um, I really like this deck, I, at least in concept. I won't pretend this is good or, you know, crazy playable or anything or, you know, the next best thing. I think for that, um, a lot of the setups are way too dependent on uh, having, you know, multiple specific pieces or sadly, you know, needing to give your opponent an additional card. But I think Deep Sea Diva, despite its age, is just still an incredibly powerful normal summon with some very potent combo lines behind it. Um, and, you know, adding on to, you know, a good bit of what makes, you know, Shark or Kragen control, whatever you want to call that water rank four deck, um, an incredibly powerful control deck um, is, just really neat. Um, Staple Space is there, but of course limited. Um, I would, you know, recommend opting for the crossout designators as you do want as many defensive options as you can get. Um, but otherwise, you know, fitting in, you know, a hand trap or two and maybe even, you know, depending on the format, some hard board breakers shouldn't be too much of an issue. Otherwise, you know, you do have good options to kind of, you know, telegraph what hand traps your opponent has and what disruptions your opponent has to maybe play around those uh, as best as you can um, and otherwise you know you're making some incredibly powerful synchro bosses with decent protection if you happen to make them with prima donna and have access to an incredibly good lineup of just xyz monsters as well um, which gives this deck i think a lot of versatility in a lot of matchups but with that out of the way i would like to hear your thoughts um what do you think of this brew um I know this is probably like, you know, just watered down Kraken control um, and, you know, thrown in a couple of Synchro Monsters. Um, 
but I like it. It's cool in concept, it's cool in theme, and it can do a bunch of, you know, very good setups, I think, that have decent bits of follow-up to them um, without being, you know, too overly uh, YouTube combo-y with like 15 garnets. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. But with all that out of the way, I will thank you guys very much for watching and see you guys again next time. But until then, goodbye.